what's up Kryptonians? Sorry that I'm about a day late with this video. I was supposed to do it yesterday, but then I decided to give an extra day because of President's Day. So I'm back with the weekend review and I'm here to recap the top five movies at the box office this past weekend while also looking ahead to some things from next week. And if you're new to this channel, if you're new to this video and you don't know exactly why you're here, don't be lost, don't be scared, just follow Rafiki. He know the way. Holy shit, that actually does remind me that I probably need to rewatch Lion King sometime soon just for nostalgic purposes because I miss it. Not the new Lion King, my Lion King, the Lion King that I grew up with. By the way, that's no shade to anybody who likes the new Lion King, I'm just saying. Like I said, top five films at the box office. It was a busy weekend. We had three new releases this past weekend. So coming in at number one at the box office this weekend was the blue blur himself, Sonic the Hedgehog. He came in with 58.02 million domestically, 68 million if you include President's Day. And worldwide, he has earned an estimated 100 million dollars through the first four days, which means, yes, Sonic fans, you're getting your sequel. Coming in at number two on the list is Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey debuted last weekend with 33 million or so. This weekend, it comes in with 17.17 million domestically. So far, it's earned 61.9 million domestically total, and its worldwide total is at 145 and a half million dollars. Third place is the new Blumhouse horror movie, Fantasy Island. I'm not going to lie to you. It was shit, but the movie did turn a good profit. The movie earned 12.3 million dollars domestically in its opening weekend and a little bit over 13.75 million total. Worldwide, it's earned about $21.3 million, so yeah, it's a decent success so far. Photograph earned $12.2 million and came in fourth place. It's the romantic drama starring Lakeith Stanfield and Issa Rae. Worldwide, the photograph has earned $13.3 million. Coming in in fifth place, still with decent legs, is Bad Boys for Life. $11.5 million in what? It's fifth or sixth weekend of release. Domestically, it has a total of $181.6 million to this point, and worldwide, it has has earned 370.1 million dollars, the highest grossing bad boys film of all time. So that's the list. You got Sonic, you got Birds of Prey, you got Fantasy Island, you got The Photograph, and then you got Bad Boys for Life. What is my biggest takeaway from this? Well, my biggest takeaway is that maybe the video game curse is finally over. Let's face it guys, we know the history of video games, we know the stigma of video games. More often than not, they've been complete shit. However, in the last few years, it feels like video game movies have been making a little bit of a comeback. We've had some decent ones in terms of quality. I like the Tomb Raider movie that came out a little bit ago. Detective Pikachu was kind of fun. Now Sonic, a movie that I reviewed and I did in fact like and give a positive rating. That movie gets a hundred million its opening weekend. It also opens the door kind of on seeing other characters. Maybe we can get a Zelda movie made. Maybe we can get something else. Mega Man. I don't know. I'm just throwing them out there. The sequel, I definitely want Knuckles because I want there to be a whole bunch of extra knuckle puns that I put in the video. Just, we need that to happen. So yeah, let Knuckles be the main antagonist of the second movie or something. Another takeaway is that Birds of Prey is still holding steady. It only dropped 48% in its second weekend, and it's nowhere near the flop that other people seem to think it is. Having said that, it's also nowhere near the success that I'm sure a lot of people hoped it would be, so yeah, there's still room to improve. I estimate that movie's probably going to finish somewhere around 200 million, maybe 220. That's what the projections are saying. I think the movie is at least going to level out, and I hope that it does eventually turn some kind of profit so that they'll be encouraged to do a sequel. Also happy for the photograph. The photograph was actually my favorite film that I saw last weekend. I gave a very positive review to that movie. I liked it a lot. I'm happy for Issa Rae. I'm happy for Lakeith Stanfield. Mostly, I'm happy for the type of movie it was, the type of black love that I wanted to see. It's made for about 15 million, I think, is the estimate. So the fact that it made its budget back in its first weekend is a pretty good sign. Now I get to the part of the video where I get to preview some of the upcoming releases for this next week. Maybe you'll see something you like, maybe you won't, but either way, I'm here to inform you. We got The Call of the Wild that stars Harrison Ford, and it, there's a CGI dog in it, and other than that, I don't really know what it's about. I know that it's based off of a book. I have not read that book. I've heard of the book. I'm sure it's a great book. Either way, you got Harrison Ford in some kind of buddy adventure with a dog, and it looks really, really cold in the trailer, so you know, bring your coats and your mufflers or whatever because it's still winter time. You got Brahms The Boy 2, which I guess is a sequel to the first boy, which is a weird sentence that I never thought I'd be saying in a video. I saw the trailer for this one and it's kind of like, okay, there's a possessed doll. There's something going on. I'm not entirely sure what the point of the movie is. If you're into horror, you have another horror movie to look forward to this weekend. And finally, there's a movie that's coming out in limited release. It's called Emma. It stars Anya Taylor-Joy and it stars Mia Goth, I think is her name. It's like, it's kind of a comedy. It looks like a family movie. It looks like Anya Anya Taylor-Joy is rich and handsome and clever, at least that's what it says on the poster. Yeah, rich people and funny stuff and quirky girl and yeah, it could be a fun movie. If it's playing around you, maybe go check it out. What's your most anticipated movie for the rest of February?
everywhere. Comment below, let me know. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.